Woo! Did you hear that? What's going on friends? Logan Myers here from Cinefellas.com and I'm here to review that highly anticipated yet utterly scary horror film that just came out by the mastermind James Wan, Conjuring 2. So I want to start off, start off by saying that I love James Wan. I love all his work. He's literally probably one of the best horror directors in the genre today. And he brings back those elements of horror, you know, that you, could, you can remember from the 70s and 80s, like The Exorcist, the jump scares, but they're done right. And James Wan, he creates this realm of ghosts, spirits, and demons that really haunt you in your dreams. I remember seeing the first in, uh, Insidious movie, and that, that red devil that came up behind Patrick Wilson, I mean, that still creeps me out. I don't get scared very often, but that thing messed with my head. And when I went to the... Hollywood Horror Movie Nights, they had the Insidious House, and I went through it, and that demon was in there, and it still gives me the willies. But with that being said, um, I, really, I really love The Conjuring 2. I was really excited about it. I love the first film. It's a perfect paranormal film that brings a family, an innocent family that's taken over by some spirit and how it affects them and the world around them, really. So in this film, we're, we're brought in with you know, Ed and Lorraine Warren, the famous ghost hunters, the original gangsters, of this field, you know, uh, played by Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga, and they're just outstanding in the second film. They're just, you know, they're different. You know, they have this this relationship, this close knit relationship, and how it affects their, you know, their family. I mean, these spirits, these hauntings, these cases that they're going on, and it really affects them, and it brings it, and it brings it back to their their home with their child. And what I really enjoyed about the beginning of this movie, it starts out at Amityville, the Amityville Horror House that has been done so many times that we all know the story. But it, it was actually their case back in the 70s. They went and investigated after all the craziness went down with the, you know, the DeFeo family. And it starts out, but it doesn't, it doesn't dive really deep into the story. It just kind of like the aftermath of what happened at the Amityville Horror House after everybody left. Um, and Lorraine Warren or Vera Farmiga, they're doing a seance and she has this premonition she sees all the dead kids down in the basement all the gunshot wounds and she has this premonition of her husband ed that gets murdered you know and she's like she freaks out and she's she's done with the business she doesn't want to you know hunt for ghosts anymore or be done with the paranormal um be done with the p paranormal uh field of work basically and that's where the movie kind of starts out but it, it shows you know that the house with the the windows and they look like eyes and it's all demonic looking and it was really excellently shot I, I just loved how it's filmed it's from like the back end of the attic and you kind of just see the eyes and it was a perfect setup of this film that they just go into just briefly but you still get the the point of what they're where they're at in their lives and like I was saying Lorraine just wanted to go back to the normal life of living with her husband and her daughter and and not being affected and kind of haunted by these demons but of course you know that, that we know that didn't happen. Obviously, there wouldn't be a movie. So Lorraine and Ed are, you know, back at the house, and Ed is is seeing this this demon, this this demonic nun that really, really was probably the creepiest part of the film. Which uh, the demon's name is Balak that you find out, and it's just it's so well done. The practical effects of this nun that just is in the house, and it's like down at the end of the hall, and you just see the white face and the yellow eyes, and it just really stood out in my head and it just really kind of creeped me out and that's what James Wan always brings to the table he has these characters these demonic entities that that are there to creep you out the audience and stick in your mind and like if you can do that as a filmmaker that's when you know you're doing something really really well in the horror genre especially so the Warrens find out about this family in Enfield uh, England the Hodgson's and it's the most documented paranormal demonic case in history. I mean, there's been recordings that you can find on YouTube of how this demon manifests itself through this daughter, this young girl named Janet. And 
and this is the case that they take on in the film. They, they uh, fly all the way to England to investigate and see what's going on. And that's what really works in this film, too. It's not just some spooky demons jumping out at you. There's, there's a, a story, there's a heartfelt story about this innocent family, this mother um, that's a single mother taking care of these four kids in England. They're poor, they're, they're, they can't barely survive, they can't make rent. You know, and you feel for them. And that's what I like about this film because you can feel, have sympathy for these characters and their innocence. And this demon takes over the, the young girl's you know, body and starts possessing her, um, possessing Janet. And it starts off as an older man named Billy. Um, it used to be his house. He, he lived in the house before them and passed away there and was haunting them. But there's a deeper premise there. There's something darker behind the, just a normal poltergeist, this old guy. There's something darker that they dive into throughout the film, which you find the backstory and, you know, this, this entity that is latched onto this young, innocent girl. And as the Warrens make their way to England to the house to investigate, you know, it's not, they can't feel this, this presence as they're hoping to, especially uh, Lorraine Warren. She's not feeling anything, and she's, you know, there's questions in the movie, is it a hoax, is it real, is this daughter actually possessed? And it, and it kind of throws in that uh, curveball in the movie, because you don't know, you know, if it's real, if it's fake, they're just doing it for publicity to get on the news, make some money off of it. And that's why it, it differs from the first film, because it was an actual case, and then they go to England, and it could be a hoax, and they, you know, wasting their time, and wasting the church's time, but that was the whole idea is going into this house to find out if it really is happening to this young girl or if it's just all part of the plan to make some money, you know, with the media. And there's just the characters in, in this in this film, you know, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga, like I was saying, but even the kids were just stand-up performances. Um, Madison Wolf played uh, Janet, the main, the main daughter that's possessed, and her siblings were just really really had a nice uh, dynamic chemistry and they, you know, were portrayed perfectly on the screen. They seem like normal brothers and sisters that fight and play games and all that good stuff. And that was, that was brought to, to this movie and I think it was done really well and believable for the most part. But, you know, this is when things start happening, creepy in instances at the, the home. Even in the day, there's like TVs turning off, chairs moving. You know, like the cops come to investigate it too, and they see all this crap going down, and it, and that's what also just really excellent about this film. It's not just because it's dark out; things are spooky, things are happening. It's happening in the day too, and that's where I think this film stands out compared to other ones in the genre today because it had origin originality, and it had some sort of uniqueness to it on top of you know some of the normal horror cliches, you know, people walking around with cameras and investigating ghosts, you know, that we've seen a hundred times already, but it was different in the fact that there's something going on throughout the day. You know, there'd be a hundred people there, ten people there, they're all seeing this. So how can one little girl fake all these occurrences? How can it be fake? And I have to talk about the camera work. I'm a camera geek. And just the way that it was shot was so beautiful. Um, just aspects in the home where the camera comes up underneath behind the girl where she's standing and you can see the window the bay window and you see like the different shadows on the wall and things moving around in the color scheme lots of dark colors you know england's always kind of rainy and dreary that's you know perfected in this in the camera work you can feel the darkness you can feel that tension that's building from the first act all the way to the end of the movie the, the set design was perfect all the costume design was perfect you know it was set in the 70s so you have like all the you know like hippie clothes and a lot of like mo like old like uh, musician posters on the walls and stuff from the 70s so that was really well done and believable and i've watched the documentary on the enfield poltergeist and james wan had it almost perfect just the way the house looked all the rooms like even what janet's wearing that red nightgown that's where the original the original you know person she was wearing the same outfit when she was haunted and it was done excellent and james wan perfects his craft like no other directors today, really. But the last 45 minutes of this film is where it really picks up. All the tension builds. You're on the edge of your seat. You're clasping onto the chair. You're focused, and that's how I felt. I felt like I was in the movie because I was so into it and it was so intense. 
Um, and that's where, in, you know, Ed and Lorraine, their story really comes into play because they have each other no matter what. Whatever they take on, they will always have each other. And nothing, no demon, no person can ever break that. And that was an over story for them as well in this film is, is their love for each other. And no matter what, they will overcome anything that comes in their way. But in the last 45 minutes is when all the, the crazy demonic poltergeist action takes place. And there's sequences of like windows shattering and shadows on the wall. And you see this... Poltergeist kept jumping out and you know the shadows and you get a little taste more of that demon um, But it, it was definitely the best part of the movie. It really picked up. It was kind of slow drag But it it picked up more with the whole horror movie aspect and I really enjoyed that part and the last part of the film and There's like a whole sequence in the in the basement where it's all flooded with water and they're trying to get into the house to get to Janet she's locked in there with this this entity and they're doing their best to get there you know Ed and Lorraine finally make their way in and it's just like a struggle I mean they're beat up they're cut they're burned I mean they're just had the shit kicked out of them both of them and they're doing their best to save this kid and and they do a damn good job doing it you know Patrick Wilson Vera Farmiga are, are the standout performances in this movie next to the to the girl that was possessed and and their struggle you know with facing this demonic creature and doing everything in their power and strength to get to her. The, the very end, ending part of the, the, the case at the um, England home where they're taking on, you know, trying to save Janet and get this demon out of her and find out that, you know, not Billy's, that Billy's not the only poltergeist or something deeper that's been following um, Ed and Lorraine for some time and they find out what its name is through some premonition that Lorraine had earlier in the film and you know they cast it out and it's just this awesome sequence and um ed is like over this window and is holding on to janet before she like falls and and lorraine is like tied down to this wall from the spirit she can't move and lorraine is like fighting against this demon and trying to get to ed and the ch and the kid janet and it's just like a vera farmiga's best best performance in my opinion next to bates motel i mean she's just excellent and her intensity for screaming at this demon and like the way that she remembers the name of the demon and that's the way to weaken it is to shout at its name and say this little prayer kind of thing and kind of destroy it. Overall, there's not much I didn't like about this film. I mean, it's just a really good horror film. It's something different, but it still has elements of other horror films and cliches, but it's done in a, in a right way, you know? It's not overdone, it's not underdone. It's like perfect in my opinion. And honestly, compared to the first one, I think I may like Conjuring 2 a little more, just for different elements they brought into this with the with the characters and just overall, you know, use of camera, the camera work, and the set design, and just the acting across the board was excellent and just believable, with a heartfelt story about you know a family too that's you know doesn't have much and you know their innocence and they're just taken over by something that you can't always control and that's you know, poltergeist or a demon. And, you know, that story just really stuck out in my head. And I, that, that's why I think it's a little better than the first film. Because you can relate to this family, you know, people are in need at times and think bad things happen to people that are down, down with their luck. And James Wan basically knocked another movie out of the park. It was almost perfection across the board in every, in every way possible. And he's so humble as a director and cares about his craft and he, he just very meticulous in everything he does, the camera angles, um, and then the way that, you know, the lights and the colors and the way that the story aligns with, you know, the set design. And he just, he's one of my favorite directors, horror directors. He has been since the Saw movies. So he keeps bringing out excellent horror films and keeps this genre alive. And that's why I love him so much. I love this movie. I highly recommend it to, you know, all of our followers and our fans that are um, checking this out right now, definitely go check it out. It killed at the box office the first week. It was number one at the box office, which is rare for a horror film. You never see that. So there's something there, and I wouldn't do you wrong. So please go check it out. So I'm giving The Conjuring 2, Enfield Poltergeist, a four out of five hair pieces. Until next time, cheese.